Hey guys, welcome back. So in this one, let's go ahead and design our page better, give it some modern look and feel, and also fix a few things that are obviously going wrong right now. So first of all, if we take a look at our title right here, our title shouldn't really be this. At least it should be like available campaigns or marketing campaigns or campaign website, something like that. So to be able to change the meta information of an HTML document, we use the head component that Next.js provides. So here we can import the head component and in any page, so let's say here in any page, we can use that head component. And then inside there, we can specify things like the title, things like the description. If we have to specify, let's say favicon, we can specify it there. If we had other things, let's say specifying like the OG properties, if you're not familiar with what OG is, let me see if I can bring it up. OG is Open Graph Protocol. Yeah, if we have some metadata for the OG, we can specify them there. So that can be OG title, OG type. So these basically are for social media. So if we wanted to specify some of these, we would do it in the head component. By the way, I love the URL, ogp.me. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, so let's go ahead and set our title since we are still basic. Then here, let's say here we want to say campaign manager. We would put that in the head component. And now if we come back to the site and go here, let's refresh it. You can see it has changed already. So now we can change the title. Let's also change the description. And then the value for that is specified in the content. Then let's say site a site for campaigns. So this can be anything. Now the details you put here are very useful for search engines. So you want to make sure that your titles are not so long, they are not too short, they make meaning. And also your description, they shouldn't be so long and they should be related to your site. So search engine optimization is a whole block of itself and I would recommend you take a look at uh, what Next.js provides on that and also read up mostly on searching optimization techniques because you might have to handle it differently regarding on the needs of your site but next yes does pretty much a good job out of the box with that but uh, feel free to explore around learn some theory about searching optimization it's gonna be useful for you even on other projects so this is how we set up the meta information for the page using the head component so now let's go ahead and style this. So I probably have mentioned this, but Next.js supports different ways to style elements. So by default, we can use CSS modules. And just like regular CSS, CSS modules allow us to import like a CSS module or a CSS file as one name. And then we can access the individual style declarations using a dot. And then we use the name of the style, the style object. So let's say here I wanted to have a container here. So what you could do is instead of saying class name equals container like this, what we can do is we can go in our style file. In this case, we're going to be in the home.module.css. And what makes it a CSS module is having a dot module in the naming. So what you can do is we can go to that file. So we're going to go to styles home.module. I'm actually going to remove everything. So let's define the, the container. So for this container, let's say we wanted to have background color equals green, something like this. And of course, we're going to be changing that, no worries. So here we import the styles. So if you're already familiar with styling React applications, whenever you add a style here and that file is being imported anywhere, that style starts to work across the application. So wherever there is a container, wherever there is a style referencing the container, it can go ahead and start to work. But notice that right now nothing is working here. I'm actually, I can actually refresh here, but you can't get that style. So instead of us doing this, we can we can access it by the style, and then we styles. Then we can call dot container on it, and then we can go ahead and close here. And now if we come back to the site, I'm gonna refresh here. You can see it picks up the style. So one thing here I wanna show you is let's inspect this. Notice that the style object is called container, but if you take a look here, you can see that Next.js went ahead and added some random stuff. So Next.js takes care of making sure that our styles are unique and are scoped to different pages and different components. So that is the instance of CSS modules. 
kind of helps us to scope different styles. And they do that by adding random text to our styles. So that's how that works. So obviously I'm gonna remove this here. We won't be working with it. Similarly, it's not really useful. So let's go ahead and restructure our HTML document and go ahead and style things better. So for the main, we are going to reference a class called main. So here I'm gonna have a class name. That's gonna be styles dot main. And obviously, and this is what is like our container now. So let's go to our module style file, create a container class. And then what we want to do in this one, so here we want to change the background color and we want to use a dark, create like a, a dark mode kind of theme. So set that one to this. And now if we take a look, you can see that we have a dark one. So one thing that I don't like is you can see that our main is not really taking off the whole screen. So we're going to set the height for it. So let's set the height to 100 viewport height. So height say 100 VH. And that should be able to take off the whole screen. Let's go ahead and set our color to be white. So let's set an overflow. So we can say overflow. Let's say overflow scroll. Now, if we come back to our page, you can see that now this is taking off the whole page, which is what we want. And uh, everything is good. So now what we're going to need to do is take everything here. Let's say leave some paddings here on the left and the, and the right. Make it look a little bit neater. So inside our content here, I'm just going to have another div. So we can say div class name. Let's set this one to styles. So it's inner content. So that will contain everything. So I'm going to cut this, make sure we can close. So it's inside the main, so make sure you can close it here. And here, let's style the inner content so we can do dot. So let's go ahead and reduce the whole width to 70%. Since the, since our background is taking off the whole body, we, will, we won't see that it has changed. So what you can do is we are going to display everything in the main as flex and then center everything. So here, let's do display flex and say justify content center. And now, if we come back again, refresh it, you can see things are in the center which is great, which is what we want. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need to do is to style the individual items, make them look a little bit better. So we're gonna go to our HTML still, and uh, inside in the map, so inside the map, we're gonna create a style here for the items, so we can have a class name, equals, let's say styles, dot item, okay? And then let's go ahead and create the styles for this. So inside here, you can have got item. So for the item, let's change the background a little bit so it can stick out, so background color. Okay, so now if we check again, you can see that this one now sticks out. We have the separation here. So let's go ahead and give it some paddings. So inside, inside the items, we can have padding. Let's set, let's set that one to 24 pixels. We need to separate them somehow. So we need to set like a margin for each of them. Actually, let's have a margin top. Let's check that. You can see that separates them out. So we need to create a grid of flex this for the items. So the image goes on the right, and then this goes on the, on the left. So we can do that by using grid. So let's have display grid. So when you say display grid, nothing should happen. Let's see. And that's because we haven't really separate, provided the variations of how the children should be laid out on in the grid so we need one we need the image to take off the smallest amount of space possible and uh, this other content to be on the right and takes off and take off the rest so we can specify grid template columns grid template columns and we want the first parent to or the first child to be just small and then we want the last one to take off the whole with it so i'm just assuming a 12 column grid and and setting the second child to take off a lot of, of space or remove the space. So that means that the first child is going to be this image and the second one is going to be this content. So this is which is what we want. So if we check again, you can see that it's working the way we want. So the next thing we're going to need to do is to put a margin here and to also maybe style the dates better and format them better and maybe make this one round and we're going to be good to go. So let's go ahead and create a, a padding left for the second item 
so let's go ahead and create a class here so class name and we're gonna do a styles dot right items so for this you can just copy this inside home then down here you can have right items and uh, basically what we need is to specify a margin left so let's set that to 24 pixels so if we check that you can see that we got the, the space so going forward we need to style the image to be in the center so we are going to be giving it a margin auto so let's, and also make it round so let's go ahead and add a class for it so let's do here.img so we want it to have a border radius of 100 percent and vs code kind of generates for me this other browser specific border radius specs so let's come here and set this to the image so you can say class name equals take a look does that help and that makes it round which is what we want so putting it in the center we need to position auto the parent so this here let's give it a class so class name equals thousand.img container so let's set that so you can do margin auto and you can see that it goes to the center so we can use date format we would format dates so this is a lightweight module that gives us a function that can format date so you can see it gets six million downloads a week oh my goodness which is a lot for a reason i believe so down here let's go ahead and install it so we can do npm install so we can just come here and install it so we can just do let me bring up the console i'm actually going to create a new terminal window cd into our front end so now that's going to give us the date format utility so to use that we want to go to our file which is index and uh, just import it date format okay so now where we are displaying the dates we can just come in and say so we want to get our date pass it into the new date object and then we want to format it so to format it so to format it we want to pass this to the format dates function so the first parameter is the date and then the second one is the format so here let's put a comma so for the format we can go ahead and specify the format you're going to get the day let's put a comma let's get the month let me first bring it up then we're going to see how it formats it so the year let's have a comma let's have the hour the minutes the seconds so now if we come back to our application let's go back to campaign manager you can see that it changes really you can see that it changes to the way we want so we have so the format here we can get more we can learn more about the format here on the library if you can see this on the library page you can see the format here and you should be able to almost do any any format you want to do with it so feel free to take a look here if you want to use this in the future so let's style this one let's make this one small because it shouldn't look like the paragraph and uh, coming back and coming back you can see that now it is yeah pretty cool actually so that's going to do it for now in the next one we're going to start talking about routing how we can route using the link component how we can use the hooks the routing hooks and how we can work with dynamic routes so it's going to be interesting if you enjoyed this one give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i'll talk to you later